Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Unreal Cousins. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can make a spike trap, kind of like in Fortnite, inside of Unreal Engine. Okay, so this is the one I already made, uh, and this is how it works. So basically, you run over it, and then you see spikes, like that, and... Yeah, basically... You just have to try to avoid the spikes. If you walk into it and the spike hits you, you reset. So I'm just going to open up a new uh, folder here so that I can make it from scratch. Uh, so I'll call this trap. And then in trap, I'm going to create a level, which is called trap, I guess. I'll open that up, save this. And then we'll add some lights. So we'll do directional light. And then... We'll add a floor, so we'll just add a box, and we'll make it like big ish. Um, we'll do like a hundred, a hundred, okay, something like that. And then we'll make a new material here with this, and we'll call this like floor, and then. Um, I'm just going to make this a random color, or I'll make it red. So we'll set this to red, and then we can connect that to base color, and it'll make this material red. And I'm just going to use this as the floor. Okay, and then we'll do a player spawn here. So now we've got my player here. And now let's try to make the trap. So we'll create a new folder called uh, floor trap. And then we'll create an A. Uh, we'll go over to volumes, or no, we'll go geometry and we'll take cone. We're going to turn this into our spike. So make it a bit thinner so it's more spiky. Something like that. And then go over here, scroll down, I think. Uh, my, yeah, here. And then create static mesh. And go into content trap. And just go to trap folder and call this um, spike. One. And just call it, uh, yes, yeah, spike. Okay. And then just the here spike, and we can pull that in and put it anywhere. So that's cool. The next thing we'll need to do is create a spikes, multiple spikes. Yeah. Okay. Blueprint class, actor, spikes. And then double click this. Um, we'll add in a static mesh. And we'll select spike from over here. Uh, no, not that one. We don't want a skeletal mesh, we want a static mesh. Sorry about that. And we'll do spike here. Yeah, something like this. But we want to make this a lot smaller. So we can just do this and then do like 0.3 or something. And then we can just make a bunch of these. So just copy these around. Okay, and now if we take spikes, put them here, see, there's multiple spikes that can hit the player if they feel like it. But these spikes aren't going to spawn unless the player stands here, of course. And now that I look at it, I think this might be too big, but we can adjust that later. So, now let's go to the event graph and hit uh, event begin overlap. And just for now, let's just print string, which says dead. What we need to do is go back to the viewport and create a plane here. And we're the reason we're doing this is because these um, things here, like if the player stands right here, then nothing's gonna happen to them. It'll only happen if they touch the spike. But we want the player to die no matter where they are in this area. So we're gonna make a plane. And we're going to flip it over like this. 
so the player can't see it. And then we're just going to make it this whole area. Like that. And then we're going to make sure that this is overlap all dynamic and compile this event graph. And yeah, this should be good. All right, let's take a look. So we still don't see anything there. And yeah, uh, let's see what we did wrong here. Should be there. Plane might be too low. Um, I'm just gonna move it up a little bit. Let's see what happens now. Yeah, there we go. So now wherever the player stands, even if it's right here, it'll say dead if it touches the spikes, which is what we want. We can delete these two. But of course, these spikes aren't going to always be here. These spikes are only going to be spawned if the player steps on a trap. So let's create the floor trap now by going into floor trap and creating an actor. So here, and we'll call this floor trap. And then double click it. And we'll just make this a plane for now, or no, a cube, sorry. And then we'll make it a bit smaller and bigger. And we're going to have to try to match the size of the cube to the size of the spikes. So let's see. If we place this here, we can see where it needs to be bigger and smaller. Of course, we could try to stretch it out like this, but we want it to be consistent so, so that it can we can spawn it anywhere. So let's just make it a little bit bigger this way, a little bit bigger this way. That looks good. Um, let's compile that, and we actually want to make sure that the spike that when the plane spawns, it's above this trap here. So. We might want it to be down like here or something, but we'll see in a minute. Okay, uh, after that, we want to make sure that this is overlap all dynamic. And <coughs> go to the event graph, and on an actor begin overlap, we want to uh, delay so that the player has time to run off. And for this, do about 0.6 seconds, I believe. And then after it delays, then we're going to spawn actor, spawn actor for class, and we're going to spawn the spike, spikes, right there, and we're going to spawn them at get layer, or actually we have to do this separately, so get layer and low, or get actor location, sorry, uh, it's this one. And then, yeah, target self, and do this. And then, yeah, I think that's what we want. So we're going to be spawning the spikes at its own location. Actually, we might want to do a uh, plus here, because it might be higher. I think we'll want to do a little higher. Maybe do uh, for the Z value. Whoops. Uh, we'll remove this pin. We'll do the Z is like 40 or something like that, and replace it like that. Okay, and now we're going to delete these spikes here. Uh, let's go to the outliner, and spikes, delete those. Okay, and as you can see, actually, I think this might be too small still. Let me take another look. So let's go back to spikes, and... Yeah, as you can see here, the floor trap is still a bit too small because the white area doesn't take up all this air space here. So we're going to just go back to the floor trap viewport and make it a bit bigger, I think. Do it like this. Yeah, that looks good. So now we can delete these. Let's 
spikes and see what happens when I touch the trap. So I'll move this out of the way and go like that. Yeah, see? Spikes. Wow, cool. I think they spawned a little bit too high. Anyway, that's okay. Could change that. We probably want to make this like 10 maybe. And let's see what happens now. Yeah, that should be good. Yeah, perfect. So, what we want to do next is um, make the make the spike traps disappear after a certain amount of time. So, let's do another delay. Um, and for this one, we want it to be fairly quick. So, point two is probably good. And then do um, destroy actor destroy actor destroy actor yes and then get this return value here and hook it up to there compile that and now it should spawn and go away fairly quickly yeah we might actually want to make it a bit quicker than that maybe 0.1 seconds Yeah, that's good. But um, as you can see, if I stand here, it's going to be really quick to like. Okay, let me do this, and then right, it's just going to it's going to keep trying to spawn it, and that's because right now, no matter what, when the player hits it uh, after 0.6 seconds, it's going to spawn it. So we actually might want to turn this down to like 0.5 or something. But we only want it to spawn if spawn if it can spawn. So we're going to create a new variable here called can spawn question mark. Okay. And then we'll put this in here and we'll uh, get can spawn and then we'll get a branch here. And then we'll put this into here like that. And we'll connect this to the branch and the true to the delay. Get rid of these. Um, and then, so now it's only going to do it if it can spawn, but it doesn't know what can spawn is. It's just going to use the default value, which will be what we want it to be true. So, um, we're going to have it set to can spawn, and then once it spawns, it can no longer spawn because it just spawned. So, we're going to set can spawn to no here because we just. We're spawn. We're about to spawn it, so no need in that. So that next time the player hits it, and this is still no, then this won't spawn. But we need to set it back to yes somewhere so that it can eventually spawn again. So um, after it destroys the actor, we actually want another delay because, like, we wanted to wait until the next time it can spawn. And this one will probably be about. Um, 1.5 seconds or something like that so 1.5 seconds and then set can spawn to yes now compile this and see walk over it jump nothing will happen until it passes that time and it resets so yeah that's the basic trap but of course there's still more to do because the trap doesn't kill me yet so let's do that uh, we want to go back to the spikes and we want to go to the event graph and instead of printing a string called dead let's do open level and the level name here is trap Okay. So open the level you're currently on, and then let's see what happens. So I can go like this, and then walk past it, or I can go like, well, I can go like this, and get reset. That's what we want. Yeah, cool. Well, I think we might want to set a little bit longer on that delay time. Uh, this delay time here, maybe set this to 1.7 or something. I'll do 1.8. I guess. And then also, let's make a sound for when the trap 
goes off so you can use any sound you want. I just recorded a sound of me tapping my microphone like that. So, um, yeah, I guess we could just play that sound. So, um, play sound 2D. We could do location, but that's a lot of work. Uh, and I think I call it like trap, trap start. And if you don't know how to import a sound, you have to convert it to a, um, a WAV file. So you can do, like if you have an MP3 file you want to play when someone hits the trap, you have to go in and change the, um, change it from an MP3 to a WAV. You can do that on a website just like Google, MP3 to WAV. And let me make sure I'm doing this at the right time. I'm not. Okay. So, I'm just going to delete this, and we would want to do it right when the trap gets triggered, so right here. Only if it's true that it's going to be triggered, then we'll play this sound. And this sound is a play sound. And trap. Trap start. I don't think we shouldn't use trap reset, because, I don't know, I don't like it. But if you want to make a trap reset sound, you could do that too. But I don't want to. But yeah, this is the basic trap. Okay, now a few things that you might want to do. So this trap, um, if we place the second one down next to it, it, and you put them like right next to each other, it's hard to tell where one starts and the other starts. Like it's sort of touching each other completely. So if we go like here, yeah, it's hard to tell. So basically what we'll want to do about that is make each of these have a color that's different in the middle and different on the edge. I already made a material which is like that. So basically you can just get any gradient image and then right click it and hit create material and it will create the material for you. And then you can open up the trap and go to the viewport and either drag it from here onto uh, right here I believe or you can just select uh, your material, and there's a lot of materials here. You could use a default material if you wanted to. I bet this would work well. Yeah, I think it will. But, so yeah. So you can see where the trap goes, and just like that, we made traps. Cool. die and yeah it's pretty cool yeet all right now if you try to do this like uh, hold on let's put it in a trap here and you put it on a wall like this it won't work right I'll show you I believe you'll just die yeah because it's just spawning it right above you so you could do something like that, but what I did, what I did, was I just made something really similar to the floor trap. In fact, we could probably just duplicate this, and then call it wall trap. And then in the wall trap, let's just change a few things. So um, in the viewport, let's take this and delete it, and then add another component as a cube and make it like this yeah and then make it wide tallish and then send it back send it up a bit because we want it to be like the same height as everything else and copy and paste it and just do something like this and then you can add a uh, box trigger or something box collision and yeah that's good you can just take that and and then you can go to these cubes and do collision and uncheck this and uncheck this and then yeah everything should work fairly similarly I think it should work let's see I think we might need to change a few things but we'll see. Okay. It's too we'll need to 
move down this box collision here a little bit. Don't do too low though or it'll keep resetting you. Because if the spike trap hits the box collision, it'll just keep, um, it'll think that the player died. So, yeah, you don't want that. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the two kinds of traps you can use for this, or at least the ones I've made. Um, you might also want to disable jumping because if you have a bunch of these in a row, or even if you don't, the player can literally just go like this. So to do that, you can just go into the um, player, and you can get rid of this, or you can do a branch here, and make a condition for jumping or not, but I'm not going to do that right now, I'll just do this, and yeah, now I can't jump, oh, you bait it, you bait it, bait it, and you're done, so leave a like on this video, whatever, see you in the next video, bye bye.